Hey there, how's it going everyone? This is Mind Blank. Welcome back to my channel where several people have pointed over on my Radeon RX 480 hybrid videos that I should also take a look into VRAM overclocking as the card seems to definitely benefit from higher memory bandwidth. So I thought I should investigate this a little bit further and also bring along the GTX 1060 and see if we can squeeze out even more performance out of these two awesome graphics cards. I was, up until I made this video, one of the many more that thought VRAM overclocking to be akin to throwing a bucket of water on a burning house. Well, I proved myself wrong. Why did I pick these two cards? Well, the RX 480, when overclocked, starts flexing its muscles and the 256-bit wide memory bus and 2GHz clock GDDR5 memory seems to not cut it. The second choice was the GTX 1060 as it is this card's match and it is even more, theoretically at this point, lacking in memory bandwidth. It sports a 192-bit wide memory bus backed up by 2GHz GDDR5 like the RX 480. The Radeon RX 480 has 256GB per second of memory bandwidth at its disposal and the GTX 1060 has 192GB per second. Already by looking at the numbers for a card meant to offer GTX 980 performance, it's short on memory bandwidth. Keep in mind that the GTX 980 has 224 gigabytes per second at its disposal. So I started overclocking to find the maximum clocks these cards are able to run. This led me to a final effective clock of 2175 MHz for the RX 480 and since GDDR5 is quad pumped we have an effective 8.7 gigabits per second. This is an 8.75% overclock and a final bandwidth of 278 gigabytes per second. For the GTX 1060, I settled on a much higher 2350 MHz, so effective 9.4 gigabits per second for a 17.5 overclock. Really not bad, but GTX 1060s all around seem to reach high memory clocks. Since it has only 192 bit bus, we have a final bandwidth of 225 gigabytes per second, which puts it on par with GTX 980's memory bandwidth. Both cars' GPUs are overclocked. The RX 480 is at 1465 MHz, 5 MHz lower than what I ran in my hybrid review since this showed more stability with highly OC'd VRAM, and the GTX 1060 is at 2114 MHz. I picked 3 synthetic benchmarks and 4 games, Witcher 3 is one of them and it doesn't play nice with AMD's video recording solution, GVR, so I had no overlay captured, I therefore had to capture just the numbers off screen with my camera and it is for the better in the end as you can see the raw FPS output of these cards. Same for the Rise of the Tomb Raider since I tested in DX12 and very very few overlays work for DX12 at the moment. GTA 5 and Far Cry Primal are captured with each manufacturer's recording solution but performance loss is negligible nowadays with both, margin of error stuff in my opinion. Also, after burner overlay reports 100 MHz less for the GTX 1060 for both stock and overclock, I don't know why that is but I assure you the clocks are set correctly. Alrighty, side by side benchmarks. And right off the bat, we can see the RX 480 gaining anywhere from 2 to 5 or more FPS in this game, but this is nothing compared to the 5 to even 10 FPS the 1060 gains. Spoiler alert, but the 1060 will show better scalability with VRAM bandwidth. This card is kept on a leash by Nvidia, in my opinion. Let's move on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, tested in DX12 because it is the better API in this game, don't be fooled by the average numbers that the built-in benchmark spits out. It often shows lower performance than DX11 but in-game DX12 has a clear advantage on more modern cards. And again, we see a nice performance boost for overclocking the VRAM on the RX 480, but the 1060 sees even better improvements. This card is severely bandwidth limited, nobody buying it should leave VRAM at stock, even if you do not OC the GPU, trust me. It's very easy and it's free performance left on the table. GTA 5 here shows a more modest but happy to have boost on the RX 480 side, VRAM overclocking puts it on par with the 2100 MHz GTX 1060 with stock VRAM, which is impressive since, and I stated this before, but GTA 5's engine lends itself very nicely to the Pascal architecture, more so than Maxwell. 
but the surprise, well, um, to be honest, not anymore by this point, is the 1060, with again jumps anywhere from 5 to 10 or more FPS. God damn Nvidia, give this card a tall glass of bandwidth already, man. And last of the game benchmarks is Far Cry Primal, which leaving aside the controversial quality of the game is optimized nicely and scales with any GPU. I moved away from the built-in benchmark and opted for real gameplay, same situation as before, definite improvement for the RX 480, but 1060 shows it's hungry as hell and gobbles up all the extra memory bandwidth it can have and then scales like mad. Seeing this card sometimes scale almost linearly with the VRAM overclock can only show the harm in putting a 192-bit bus on a card like this. I tested three Synthetix Fire Strike is first and we see improvements for both camps. The RX 480 goes into 1500 plus range at these clocks, which is just WTF territory considering where I started with this card and its stock plus reference blower cooler. Uh, the 1060 again is happy with any extra bit of bandwidth it can get its grubby hands on. Time Spy shows the same level of gains as Fire Strike, but notice that both seem rather unimpressed with the improved bandwidth and certainly do not scale nearly as nice as games do. This is one reason that I do not particularly like synthetic benchmarks and don't use them often. Last is Unigen Heaven which shows zero improvements, a very curious, strange even, on the RX 480, but we don't care, nah, -uh, cause we don't game on heaven. It does, however, allow the GTX 1060 to achieve an even better score than simply overclocking the GPU. Well, this was a very interesting one. It seems that the RX 480 does indeed benefit from increased memory bandwidth, unlike some other cards where increasing the memory clocks actually does nothing, at least in terms of performance. But we have to agree that the biggest surprise here has to be the GTX 1060. This card actually scales almost linearly with a memory overclock in some cases and I don't know if this makes me glad or mad. Glad for those of us that are willing to overclock both the GPU and memory cause there, there is tons of hidden potential, heaps of hidden potential behind the stock GTX 1060 clocks. I for one will certainly not forget to overclock my VRAM from now on. So remember everyone, you're not overclocked until you um, VRAM. Yeah, thank you for watching everybody. Like, comment and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye.